few archaeological discoveries that summon the imagination, like Machu Picchu in Peru. The journey to Machu Picchu begins in the town of Cuzco, which was the Inca capital. It lies at great altitude, so people go there to acclimatize before attempting to hike the Inca Trail. Given its high altitude of 11,000 feet, even checking into the hotel is done while seated while they give you coca tea. The guide for our journey was this man, Romulo Lizarraga, whose great uncle was the first farmer to actually discover the city of Machu Picchu. During one of the acclimatization days, we went into the sacred valley of the Inca, the Urubamba Valley, to see some of the local ruins before starting our journey on the Inca Trail. While we watched the porters put our expedition together, we were reminded how most people visit Machu Picchu on train. They go on train and they come on train. The first part of the trail isn't quite what you expect. You walk along the river for quite a while and you see villages, houses, and people just going about their lives. Many people live along the trail at this point. After lunch on the first day, the trail was a little different. We turned away from the river and we started seeing more ruins. Most of us had never heard of any of them. By the time we got to our first camp in Huaylabamba, we were ready for a rest. Super duper. We made it in about six hours as far as this point. Excellent. I think tomorrow we're going to begin a little later. <laughs> so it could be 7.30, beginning to, uh, to walk up to the mountains. Is that okay for you? The next morning, we started our long hike up to the highest point on the Inca Trail. It's translated to Dead Woman Pass. It's almost unpronounceable in Spanish. We stopped for lunch within sight of the top of the pass. Esta es el camino de la Inca. Es muy alto, pero no. <laughs> when we reached the top of the pass, we were all relieved. At this point, we realized altitude was not going to be an issue for the remainder of the hike. <laughs> Our second night was spent at Runkurakai. It was under the second large pass on the trail. At this point, things started to feel a little different. The trail started showing some of its magic. Well, we're at our second campsite. I have no idea how to say the word. Titicaca, Waka, Nama, Lama, The third day, it really hits you. This trail was that hiked by the people who left the Inca Empire to cut themselves off after the Spanish invaded, and they cut themselves off from all civilization. As we walked through these mountains and the forests, we started realizing what it must have felt like to be isolated away from everything you know. Signs of civilization were growing rare. Occasionally, we would run across a city that had recently been uncovered by an archaeological dig. This portion of the trail seemed really out of place. It was jungle, yet the trail was very well paved and there were steps going through tunnels so that we could navigate the treacherous hillsides. Oh, look, like a ledge.
Our final night on the trail was at Puyo Patamarca, above the ruins. It was an opportunity for us to get cell phone reception, so some of us took the opportunity to call home and work. This was the last night we spent with our porters. The next day they would hike out on a shorter route and catch a train on their way back. They didn't hike with us all the way to Machu Picchu. The final day was spent going downstairs, upstairs, and through ancient cities that had been recently dug up. The final settlement we visited was Winyawena. This was a city that was dug up as recently as 1991. Finally, on the afternoon of the fourth day, we arrived at the Gate of the Sun. We walked through it to get our first look at Machu Picchu. Stop walking. It's incredible. I had no idea it would be that beautiful. Oh, it's unbelievable. That takes your breath away. I know, it's amazing. <laughs> well, I'm excited to go back home for a while, but I'm still enjoying here at the Sun Gate, having this beautiful view of Machu Picchu, my birthplace. After walking four days, I think it's very nice to be relaxing here. <laughs> That afternoon, we walked down to Machu Picchu and took the buses down to Aguas Calientes, the town below Machu Picchu. We spent the night there, and the next day we came back, and we had the opportunity to explore Machu Picchu with the help of Romolo. Because there are problems in Cusco, the Spaniards doing this, doing that, so these people accelerated the construction. Look at that. Yes. They made it faster, in order to house, who knows, 400 women. They are the Andean mountain biscacha, okay? One of the species of rabbits in South America. He showed us his family farm where his grandfathers discovered Machu Picchu from. He showed us the hitching post of the sun. The windows were at solstice. The sun first enters when it comes through the gate of the sun where we had entered into the city the day before. Okay. Give it to me, you touch her. To preserve and decorate the mummies. That is the way he called it. <laughs> Workers continually refurbish the city so that it doesn't get swallowed by the jungle again. They've even refurbished a small section so you can see what it was like when people lived there. That's what killed the Incas. Infected llama spit in the water supply. Towards the end of the day, after the better part exploring Machu Picchu with the expert help of Romulo Lizarraga, we headed back down to Aguas Calientes, just to get a feel for what it's like in a Peruvian mountain town. That afternoon, we boarded a train and went back to Cusco. At that point, we felt like we were just regular tourists. <laughs> <laughs> 